Okay, I think we're going to get started here. We're a couple minutes past 11 o'clock. If people join us, um, they can certainly follow along with where we are. Um, we're going to try to, to have this be about 45 minutes or so. Um, we've got a lot of good information. The real purpose of doing this webinar, this is our third. Uh, we had a lot of new features come out in, in the Specto software, and we're wanting to make the bowling centers aware of them so they can uh, help promote this, the centers that have it. And we also invited the bowlers that are around centers that have Specto to make all the bowlers aware of all the robust features that we've got in the product. So that's our goal today. We really want to walk through all the different, different things that Specto can offer, give you some tips on how we think you can use the tool to, to practice and, and have fun and get better. So um, at the end of our, our um, webinar today, we've got a, a cool video with featuring Daria. And then Daria is going to join me live uh, and be here for some questions and answers. So um, at the very end, you've got a chat feature um, throughout. Uh, feel free to, to chat some questions in the chat box. Um, we've got a moderator behind me helping that's going to be following the questions, and we'll get to some of those questions. You can ask me anything you want about the product. Um, you can also ask Daria some questions once she joins us. So we'll get, get fired up. Fun stuff. Specto. Here we go. All right, so um, what we're going to cover today is we're going to briefly touch on, uh, you know, what we're doing with Specto and the PBA tour on Fox, <clears throat> the ways that Specto can help you improve. Um, the new updated software has got three major modules. We've got Spect we're calling it Specto Worlds, Specto Performance, and Specto Challenges. Um, prior to this most recent update, everything that Specto was in the mobile application was all Specto performance. So the two large improvements are the Specto worlds and challenges, and we're going to show you the, the new improvements there. Uh, we've got some suggestions on, on ways to practice with Specto. This is um, things that we've observed and some feedback we've gathered from some high-level bowlers, some mid-level bowlers. And then, as I said, we've got a special guest at the end, Daria. And um, she's going to announce a Specto World Traveler contest. And then very last, we'll have our question and answer session. So we've actually not been at this very long. Um, some of you may, may know that Kegel's got a long history of trying to track the bowling ball, get this data. Previously, we did sell the CATS system, which was the computer-aided tracking system. And this is a much more robust, much more accurate, a lot more information, a lot more features um, having the mobile application with it. It's just a gigantic step forward in technology, but tracking a lot of the same, same information. So where is Specto? So far, we launched Specto a summer of 16, and we were doing our first installs the very tail end of 2016. And we really got cranking the first part of 2017, installing bowling centers. Um, around the world, so so it's basically just 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 at the two-year mark, maybe a couple months over. But so far, we've installed Specto Bowling at top bowling companies. Every ball manufacturer has installed Specto. The USBC has installed Specto. Training centers around the world, college-based training centers, high lineage league centers, centers with coaches. Uh, so far, we've installed Specto at 114 centers in 24 countries. And in, in that short period of time, what we've seen is very quickly, um, Specto has become, Specto Bowling has become highly accepted by coaches around the world. It's universally become adopted as the best tool to help bowlers really see what's going on in their game, with their game, and to get better. And this was definitely a big step forward. I think most of you have seen um, we've got a new relationship with Specto on TV with the new relationship with Fox and the PBA. Uh, we spoke with them summertime last year, showed them all the ways that it could be used, and we're super excited that they're using it the way that, uh, that they are. Previous attempts with CATS technology in the past, the information was brought up every once in a while, and we recommended strongly that the information be left up on the screen throughout the entire telecast. By seeing shot after shot after shot, you can really follow along the action and see what's going on, see if the, if the bowler missed, if the bowler's repeating shots very well. 
Um, but by only putting the data up there every once in a while, it's not really helping tell the complete story. So to our surprise, and our, our, we're very pleased about this, it's a mandate. As you've seen, that the SPECTO information is left up on the screen, the entire telecast. So the feedback's been really, really positive. We think everybody, almost, you can't even imagine watching Pro Bowling now without this. Um, so for those of you that haven't seen some of the telecasts, we're just going to have a few, a few screenshots to show you some of the things uh, that we've done to enhance the telecast. What you're looking on the right is pretty much the, the default template that they've got on the right side of the screen, which is putting a live trace of the ball in real time. It's giving us the, the launch speed off the bowler's hands, the RPM, the location of the ball at the arrows, their target, and also the location of the ball at their break point. <clears throat> Uh, another very, very popular screen, when we showed this to the Fox producers and uh, the guys, we showed them this concept of let's leave an ideal line. Once they throw a strike, let's leave a, a line on the screen to show the audience what they're trying to do. And then let's trace a line of a different color on top of that so they can really see whether or not they, the shot that they just threw is doing what they actually were attempting to do. So here's a good example on the, the doubles show a couple weeks back with Matt Ogle and Sean Rash winning the title. I mean, this was Matt's first time on television. And, you know, you, you wouldn't know it was his first time on television given the shots he's making. Here's an example. I mean, look at these, look at the, the, what he was trying to do compared to the actual shot, virtual carbon copies. The first two, three games, he was just making great shot after great shot after great shot. Um, it was a really impressive performance for a guy making his first TV show. And, and without Specto, I mean, you knew the results were good in terms of knocking the pins down, but without Specto, you really wouldn't be able to appreciate what a great performance that was. Um, this is also, you know, a good example here. Um, you know, and I'm talking to some of my friends that have been watching bowling that don't know bowling very well, and they're kind of really telling, telling me how it's really helping them understand the game of bowling better. I mean, here's an example from the same show, and you can see here on the right, you know, that that how close the actual line is to the ideal line, and the result was good. And it's very obvious here that the bowler, their shot compared to the ideal line was not what they were trying to do, and and the result was that they didn't knock all the pins down. So it's really helping the non-bowling audience follow along with what's going on. And obviously, if we can grow our audience, uh, the bowling audience, it would certainly be good for, for all of us and good for the sport. Uh, these are some of the game summaries that we've got, really doing an in-between match comparison. You know, this was the Hall of Fame Classic when Bill was bowling, Bill O'Neill was bowling Jason, Bill went on to win. And, you know, here's just an example. If you look, this particular tournament, the pattern was really long. And if you look at the, the heads here, you can see the position at the arrow. Jason actually wasn't that much off. I mean, all of his shots were within one board. Uh, Bill was certainly a little tighter, but where things got very much different was at the break point. Bill was really playing the lanes a little bit more direct and really controlling his angles better. And you see that really bear out here at the position at the break point. Bill was able to control his ball reaction at the break point under two boards. And, you know, and, and Jason's ball reaction was definitely more erratic down lane. And the results, the results showed. So he was over three boards is what the range was. So it's just a great way to see what really happened. I mean, these are two great bowlers. And, you know, Bill moved on. But what was the difference in that match? You know, and why did one player uh, have better results? So this is, a, you know, a great example of the type of story that we can tell with Specto. So, all right. So that's what's going on with the PBA. Now we're going to move on to how Specto can really help improve your, your skills. Uh, one of the most you know, basic things that people think about when they first start using Specto is consistency. And you throw a lot of shots. And, and so if we've had cats here and this type of tracking technology that preceded Specto for a very long time. And we've collected lots of lots of data, lots and lots of bowlers over a 20-year period. And we've been able to learn to see basically on the grouping of shots, you know, how close together these shots are it really tells us what the average of the player is. So this is a good example that's kind of demonstrating the consistency. 
Um, obviously, that's something everybody should should really strive for. And being able to see this stuff with Specto can really help you improve your game and let you know where you are and kind of what levels you should set some goals to aspire towards. We want you to, to think about Specto in this way. Um, this here being kind of the C, being the pin deck, and being the pins, you know, the results of what we're trying to do is obviously throw strikes and make spares and knock more pins down. But here's the lane here, section B, and this is the bowling shot. This is everything that Specto is gathering, right? But everything that you're doing here in this section, the approach, the timing, your swing alignment, your release, all of the consistency here is what's going to produce the results here. All right. And and this is we're going to explain as we talk about Specto a little bit, really how focusing on the process here will really show you the effects and the results of, of what you're trying to achieve with Specto. And then obviously that leads towards better results when it comes to knocking the pins down. So can we really have good results here with C without having good consistency and repeatability here in this lane section that we're measuring with Specto? And can you have, right, just like what I just said, can you have, you know, effective, good uh, results on B without proper execution and being very consistent with your approach and your shot making in this part of the way? So when you practice with Specto, basically what it's really showing you is when you make changes here, when you're really focused on your timing, when you're focused on your swing alignment, you're able to see the results here in B. So if you're working on something in particular, without having Specto really show you what the results are, you might not be able to see what really the difference is. So this is a really good way to think about we're wanting people to really focus on the process and all of the physical game. And what Specto is really doing is giving you great feedback. Without this, the Specto, the feedback that we've had basically is knocking the pins over. But the feedback that we've got here with Specto is showing you some other good things that you can see in terms of consistency, your ball speed, location, all that stuff. So as a bowler, you really should move from zone C to zone A to make a proper shot with good ball motion, zone B, really be very process focused. It helps you kind of achieve your goals when it comes to, to knocking the pins down. This is a really a good example of, you know, of actually tracking a bowler with Specto. On, on this particular bowler here, we had them focusing on A. Their goal was to try to hit the target. So they're trying to hit the 12 board. And these are the actual shots tracking with Specto and what the results were. And then working with a coach, we actually had the, the bowler focus on A, working on their alignment, working on just repeating a shot, not really worried about the lane, worried about all the fundamentals back on the section of A. And look at the results on B got obviously quite a bit better. All right, so Specto can really help you show details of your shot in that lane section and show you how your approach affects the outcome, providing with multiple ways to practice to improve targeting so your shots get better, have much more consistency in hitting your mark, consistency in speed, revolutions, and really help become much more versatile. All right, so when it comes to practicing with Specto, most people hate practice. I know I do. I'm getting out to bowl the USBC Open Championships next Friday. Everybody knows here when they see me bowling, he must be going to bowl nationals. It must be like a week away because he's finally starting to practice. But it's typically just because it's just not much fun. You know, when you're bowling, whether it be in league or competition, those shots count. You know, they have meaning. And uh, so most people really don't like it. I don't think that's exclusive to bowling. I would think any sport People enjoy the real thing more than they do the actual practice part of it. Um, and most people don't have a coach. So Specto, um, you know, is really an excellent tool to do a couple things. You know, it can really help bowlers that don't have a coach work on, improve their game. It can help practice be more fun and more meaningful since most people don't like practice. So it's one of the big goals that we've got. Of, of introducing this tool was to try to really help people have fun practice and do it more often and, and help them move along towards accomplishing their goals on the lanes. 
So it's a new way to practice with purpose and also to make it fun. All right, so this is a really exciting thing to talk about at Specto Worlds. Um, it's improving your skills while you're playing a game. I don't know how many of you had a chance to, to see this, but Specto Worlds has been out now for about three weeks. Um, this is in the mobile application, so this would be on the cell phone or on your tablet. Uh, when you launch the app now, um, what you used to see, everything that Specto was before a couple weeks ago, all lives in this bottom right-hand section called Specto Performance, and which is excellent. We're going to walk through this, too, and show you guys a lot of the things that are, are in Specto Performance because there's a lot of great, great features that we see being a little underutilized. Um, but we added a couple new modules that we think are excellent, and when bowlers are using the mobile application on their own and they don't have a coach, that this is a way to really make it a lot more fun. So Specto Worlds is basically a gamified experience. Instead of just putting on live mode with regular Specto where you're throwing shots and seeing how consistent you are, Specto World takes all the thinking out of it and really turns it into a Angry Birds or a game-like experience. So here's the first menu that you'll see. You select your difficulty level, novice, average, expert, or superstar. And currently we have four worlds built in the four different uh, skill levels. But you click on, on world one and go into world one, level one, and off you go. So and this is what the first level would look like. Um, each level, each mission basically is, is asking you to do something. It could be speed related, it could be uh, accuracy related, uh, it could be accuracy in the front or down lane, hitting the pocket, a combination of a variety of skills, but it's going to tell you what it's trying to ask you to do. Now this is the novice level, this is world one, level one. This says to hit between the half board and the 39 and a half board, which is basically keep it on the lane at the lay down at 30 feet and at entry. So I think most people could probably accomplish this. Um, but each mission basically is five shots. Um, you throw the five shots and if you did it correctly, you get this green uh, bubble. If you don't do it correctly, you know, you would get a little red mark here. And, and basically at each level you are, you are earning stars. Um, for each level you need to get one shot uh, correct in order to unlock the next mission, unlocks the next level. So here's an example of it actually getting to be a, a little bit more difficult. Um, this is asking you to hit between the eight and a half board and the 26 and a half board at entry, which I think I could do in an 18 board zone at the pocket. What do you think, Daria? I, think I could probably do that. It's possible. At least one out of five. Yeah. Um, but you see here, this is just showing you what would happen if, if it was not uh, what it asked you to do. Um, so here would be kind of a red. Um, and then obviously this shows you the next shot is good and um, this is green. So what's great about this, this kind of Specto Worlds, and we talked about making practice fun. Most people without a coach, I don't think they really know how to practice or what their game plan is. I think most people just try to throw strikes and maybe they shoot some spares that are left over. Um, maybe they grab some different bowling balls and try to strike with some different bowling balls. But as far as these skill-based practices, um, you know, there's not a lot of good information out there. And what a wonderful thing about this is that it does all the thinking for you. You know, you pick your skill level, pick the world, you know, click start, and it's giving you skill-based practice routines to find for you, and you just got to, to do them. And, and it really is, it's obviously fun, but it's also given those shots a purpose, you know, by, by wanting to do these, complete all these levels perfectly and to collect the stars and to unlock the next level. Um, I know we had another PWBA star here. We had Verity was one of the first to try this uh, product. And as she was testing it, one of the particular challenging levels, and when you move up to the superstar, some of the levels are extremely, extremely difficult. Um, so she was doing one of the more difficult ones, and she couldn't get three stars. It was driving her nuts, you know, and she kept doing over and over. She wouldn't move on to the next level until she got perfect three stars. So for her, those shots meant something. They weren't just throwaway shots in practice without focus. They made it you know, they made it matter. They gave that practice a purpose. So 
Um, we think this is a, a fun way to take the tool um, and to really make the experience of using the product a little bit better. Okay, here's some um, another example of some speeds. Um, you see here, this is is the level is throwing the ball between 14.6 and 16.2 miles per hour, um, and this is where it's going to get pretty interesting and challenging. I mean, some bowlers might you know throw the ball really fast, so some of the skills that are even have a large range at at a lower ball speed might be challenging to do it five times in a row. I know I I certainly one of my biggest things I struggle with is throwing the ball a little bit slower consistently. Um, so this is really an, an excellent thing to start thinking about. It challenges you to, to really try a variety of skills, play different parts of the lane, throw the ball different speeds. So even though there's a big range in this particular mission, you know, it could be a speed that's dramatically different. For someone, it, this might be right in their wheelhouse and be pretty easy, but there's going to be some faster speed ones. It might be more challenging for some, some bowlers. Um, and here's another one here. You see that a lot of them, the, the missions might not just be in one location. They might be in multiple locations. So here you see some, this is kind of a tracking progress. You see this particular bowler, you know, got three stars um, on level three. They only had gotten one star. Um, so you get a sense. Down here, it's showing you all the stars that you collect. And if you collect enough stars in each world, you earn some medals. And if you get perfect, you get a trophy. It's like Angry Birds, right? Um, so here's a completed look, you know, done. Congratulations, you completed level 10. Uh, shows you that you can replay that one if you think it's fun and you want to do it again or if you want to move on to the next level if you've unlocked it. Um, and you see right here down at the bottom the tracking of all the stars that you collect and the progress. This is um, a, the dashboard. So this has, you know, a lot of things, not just in worlds, but here in the, the world section, it's giving you a global view of all the stars and the levels that you've worked on and the various skill levels, um, showing you the medals collected, trophies collected, stars collected, et cetera. So, yeah, it's a, a fun way to take practicing skills and turn it to playing a game. <clears throat> all right. So, um, so here are some of the things. Um, that we're so again here this looks like the same slide here all right so here's some um, some tips on using specto worlds um, our suggestion is obviously is to try to get three stars on each level um, we think you should try every difficulty even some of the novice difficulty levels some of them might be super easy um, you know we think it'd be good and fun to work through those difficulty levels even if some of the lower level practices sound too easy, you can still try to make it harder on yourself. As an example, uh, if the aim is to keep the ball in the lane, like the one we showed you, you can certainly try to do it from each arrow. Um, and one of the cool things that we've seen here, you know, we've got the Weber International uh, Collegiate team that practice here. They've been grabbing five guys and they've each been doing one shot. So they've been playing these games with teams as Baker. So this is a fun way for, for high school teams um, and youth to, to practice together and try to uh, um, you know, work through some of these levels uh, in a Baker format. Um, and as we said here, yeah, you can choose a simple level and try to make each shot from, you know, from a different arrow. So this one here is choose a simple level like entering the pocket and try to do it with five different angles. So this one, you've got a pretty wide range going into the pocket. If you were practicing with this, you could try to do this one from the first arrow, second arrow, third arrow, and just give yourself a variety to try to make that specto, uh, make this particular level a little bit more challenging. All right. Um, that's pretty much it with specto worlds. If you have any questions about it at the end, you can certainly um, ask some questions. Uh, in the comments, but we think that really covers everything about it. We encourage, if you haven't tried it yet, to go out and, and use the mobile application and get on the lanes and throw some with it. We'd love to have your feedback on, on the levels, on what you like about it, you know, what you'd like to see different. Um, it is new and new piece of software and software often makes improvements as people give us feedback about it. So we encourage you to try it and let us know what you think. Um, this this next section here is basically uh, things that are happening in Specto performance, which is basically what Specto has been up into Specto worlds. 
Um, and we really want to walk through. We know that, that if you've used Specto a lot, maybe you're familiar with a lot of this stuff, but we've been tracking the usage of all the things in the Specto mobile application, and we can really see, um, you know, a lot of the things that are pe that people are using. And we know that there's underutilized features in here that are excellent. So we want to make you aware of the variety of ways you can use this tool as well. And this was the real, um, you know, primary software kind of designed by coaches for coaches working with bowlers to really try to help people see this information and get better. So when you first uh, open the mobile application, you're going to see this view here, which is the, the live table view. Um, up here in the top left, we have basically the default screen is showing you six pieces of information. Um, for some of the bowlers that are looking at this information for the first time, we had 10. This is all the information it captures. But the feeling was this could be a little confusing and a little overwhelming. So we, we started with this six, this more simplified view, which is the location at the arrows, the breakpoint, the distance. So this is the location where it is. This is the distance down the lane that the ball is starting to break. The location of the ball entering the pins the launch speed on the front end and the RPM. So now for a more advanced bowler that loves this information, understands what's going on, you can certainly switch the view to the 10, um, 10 pieces of information screen and, and look at some more things like some angles um, down lane. All right. This is a, um, a wonderful screen. Um, and talking to Daria about using Specto yesterday. This is called Deep Practice. Um, it's been studied by coaches as a very, very effective way to really see improvement in skills. And it allows you to very deeply focus on doing one thing and doing it over and over and over again. So basically, you can use this Deep Practice mode for targeting. You can use it for speed control. You can use it for RPM. But basically, you pick what you want to focus on. So you see here, this is launch speed. The target is 17 miles an hour. And depending on the skill level, you might play around with what range you give yourself. So here's a range of three miles an hour, which is a mile and a half on each side. So the total range is three miles an hour. And you just throw shots, trying to execute and do that same thing, focusing on the A part of the lane, focusing on your approach focusing on your fundamentals that get you to throw the ball 17 miles an hour and very, very quick feedback, red, green, that I do what I'm trying to do or not. Um, and you can really focus on your game as to what's work and what is helping you get to where you're executing what you want. So it's really a wonderful um, single focus practice tool. Um, you also can use it in a way as you start to get more advanced, um, you can pick two pieces of data. So if you want to work on your versatility and you want to focus deep practice on two things, you know, whether it be your launch speed and your RPM, same thing. You can give yourself a range on both of those things and really deeply practice those two. So you have some flexibility in using the deep practice mode, not just on one uh, particular data point, but also on two to help you improve your versatility. So now we're going to get into some of the, uh, the practices that we've got created. So you see here at the bottom, we had the live mode. We also have my sessions where a lot of the things that you're working on are stored. Um, we have evaluations, but this is the practices section. There's a bunch of great practice sets that have been created by some world-class coaches. These were designed for national teams, for college teams, to help them work on particular skills. Uh, many of them have a particular number of shots that they require, but we really encourage you um, to go in there and utilize these. If you haven't seen these already, um, the, this is the category in terms of the things that they're having you work on um, and just unlock and, and follow through. So you see here, this is breakpoint zone proficiency, five through 10. Um, and you see here what it's asking you to do and what it's asking you to hit. So it's, it's like worlds in that way that it's kind of guiding you through a certain number of shot practice sessions. You're not playing a game, but it is, it is actually a guided practice type, type of uh, tool that can be very effective and very useful. Um, so this is the evaluations section of the module, which is 
fantastic. There's really two basic things here. You have the ability, so you're working hard, you're practicing a lot. You have you want to have a sense of of where your skills are, and these ranking sessions. You throw some shots, and the idea here on these shots is to throw them as consistent as possible. And based on those consistency ranges, Specto is going to tell you really where you line up. It's going to show you where you're strong, what are some areas that you should focus on. So it's an excellent tool using the data that we've collected from you know tons of bowlers over a, a number of years um, to help really give you some feedback and focus on where you would need to work. So there's three different versions here. The real difference here is the number of shots, whether it be a five shot ranking, 10 or 15. Um, up here, this is the ball performance test. This is relatively new. We introduced this summer of 2018. So out of the two years, this has only been, been available the last six months, but it's dynamite, really a dynamite tool and something that we're, we're really confident that most people aren't aware of yet. We want to make sure you're aware of it because it's something that can really help you with your game. <clears throat> so um, the system does provide great opportunities for measurable long and short term goals. Um, so here you see the, the ball performance test. Um, you can, this is what I was just showing you in the evaluations mode. This is a great way to, let's say you grab a new ball, you want to have a sense of what that ball does differently than the other balls in your arsenal. A couple of things that you're seeing here, you've got obviously here at the very top, you've got total hook and number of boards. So as you're looking at, at your different balls, this is a good place to start and kind of seeing how much overall hook there is um, in terms of you know what might be your strongest to the weakest ball. And this is great here. This section here breaks down where the ball hooks. So you see here, this, this green section is the heads to the mid and then the blue section being in the back end. So this does a, really a great job of, of showing the overall strength of the balls, but also breaking down and showing the differences in the ball motion from ball to ball. So we're really recommending if you've got an arsenal and you really want to see what the differences are, to grab your balls, go into the ball performance test evaluation. This can really help you analyze your arsenal. Might be, might let you know where you have a hole in your arsenal, kind of a, a, a spot that you need to fill. But if you're head to a tournament, something like that, this is a great, really a great tool to be able to see that. Um, you know, we certainly recommend to, to think about the pattern you're bowling on for that. You know, some patterns help kind of show greater differentiation between your equipment where some house patterns might really, um, you know, make the arsenal look a little bit more similar. So keep that in mind. And here's the 3D view, which is really a cool way. I, I, I know a lot of people have seen this. Um, you can grab this and move this all around and look at it from this perspective over here. This is also a nice, cool way uh, to visualize and analyze your shot and analyze your game. I'm just going to show you some data here in the launch section, show you some data here as the ball's starting to hook, and then go in here into the roll phase as it's entering the pins. And it's giving you data in terms of the speed your ball's traveling and the position it is at these different locations. I think many of you know that uh, the speed does, the ball does lose speed as it's traveling down the lane. So this is cool to be able to really show you what's happening there. Could you have any hotter in here, Or Good grief. He's got a heater on in here. It's like 85 degrees. <laughs> nice. I'm from the All right, these skinny people, they need a heater on in Florida in the summer. All right, um, so this is, uh, it's obviously we've started to use Specto uh, on tour. We're using it here with some of the best bowlers that we've got. Um, and this is a good way to compare. Hey, can you give me a towel or something on there, please? Uh, it's freaking hot. Um, good way to compare yourself with friends, teammates, uh, and professionals. Give you a good idea of what the pros, what their ball speed is, the range of their speed, the RPMs. So, like, we've got Daria here today. This is showing. It's hot, man. Good grief. Excuse me. All right. All right. So look, we've got Daria here, her ball speed here at 17 and a half mile per hour. Um, you know, she's obviously got a fantastic RPM. 
Um, here's Rhino at, at 390. So these cards are, are things that we've been sharing on social media, give you a good way to compare how your numbers look to some of the best bowlers in the world. Now we also have um, a coach's application, which is free. Um, many of you that are in centers that have a coach might have used this with a coach. Um, it's available in the Microsoft Store. So if you are in a bowling center and there isn't a coach or there isn't somebody in the bowling center that is using it, you can go into that store and download this yourself and unlock a lot of these features. So we're going to show you some of the things that's different about the coach's application. Um, one of the things that's really pretty cool about the coach's application is on the line itself, you can see skid hook roll, you know, friction points, target line, oil patterns, all on one screen. So if we have a, a map of the lane like we do here in the Kegel Training Center, we can even overlay the lane map. So it's a, a much more elaborate, robust piece of software that many coaches are using. This is a really a, a very cool tool where a coach, um, you can use a line to draw and to find a particular line to practice. So here the, the goal is to hit the 14 board at 15 feet um, and then the 8 board at 45 feet. So you see this is the line that's being defined as the practice line and then throw in the actual shots uh, that you're attempting to do. And I'll mention this, one of the things that we're talking about doing is adding a a strike trap, uh, strike track type feature like you see on tour where in the mobile application you can actually have your ideal line and then throw shots to try to duplicate that ideal line. It's very similar to what we've got here uh, in the coach's application. Uh, <clears throat> in the mobile application you only have one shot that stays on the screen uh, but one of the, the things that the coach's tool and the coach's application is a little different is leaving the history of all the shots here. Um, and you see these are the controls here. But all the different shots that you're throwing. So if you're making moves and migrating on a lane pattern, this will show you basically the full history of all the shots that you've thrown. All right. The last one that we're working on um, is not available yet. It's coming later in 2019, but it's called Specto Challenges. And we're super, super excited about Specto Challenges. So again, our goal is to try to get people practicing more, make the shots count, have fun practicing. So basically what Specto Challenges will be are taking individual skills and making them mini competitions. So instead of playing a full journey like Specto Worlds where you're starting and trying to move through something on your own, these are individual challenges where it's just focused on one particular skill and you're going to post a score. And there'll be leaderboards, so you'll be able to play against people from all around the world and really see challenge, use your skills to challenge them against other people using Specto from all over the world. So I know there's been some, some software like X bowling is a good example where the goal was to try to get people bowling against each other from around the country and around the world. But lane conditions plays a pretty big role and the scoring pace might be radically different from one to the next. But the 20 board is the 20 board no matter what bowling center and 18.1 miles an hour is the same. So with Specto, we actually have the ability to do some of these across the world virtual competitions using skills challenges. And some of the things we've got Daria here we're talking about are having some fun competitions. We might have some pros here and do some fun promotions where you're bowling. Daria might post her score in the speed ladder challenge and you'll have to try to beat Daria's score. So we have some, some final tips on how to practice with Specto. A lot of people think that Specto is really for, um, for just for the best bowlers in the world. And the, one of the things that we really want to impress with people is that it's really for uh, bowlers of all skill levels. They all can benefit from seeing the information that Specto shows. And we've talked to some of the bowlers and we've got a sense of how some of the bowlers are using it. And really some of the high level bowlers, what they're really looking at are very specific details in the performance 
They want to know when they're working on small changes in their physical game, how it's affecting their results on the lane. They want to see exactly how their arsenal is working one ball uh, compared to the other. So using very specific tools and working on very fine-tuned details, Inspecto gives great feedback to really be able to see how those tweaks and changes are really having some of the results and effects out on the lane. Some of the ways that, that some of the mid-level bowlers uh, have been using it, they really want to get a sense of how good they are. You know, they want to learn a lot of things. You know, they hear things from a lot of other bowlers. They might have heard things from their pro shop operator. And they're not entirely sure whether these things are going to work or not or how they will affect their game. So it's really a great way to try things out and really see what, what they do. Um, it helps with measurable goals to see their development and motivation. And really, it's a, a great way. A lot of these bowlers are using it to compare themselves with other, not just by using scores. So it's a, a great tool to do that as well, kind of people seeing the different ranges that they're in. <clears throat> so one of the things that's really, really interesting that we see that most people, when they came to this particular view, and, and they're asking questions of how do I use this tool and how do I practice with it, most people are just thinking consistency. They're just trying to throw these shots and they think they want these numbers to be as close as possible to each other, which is certainly the case. You Definitely consistency. But some of the other ways that people can use it is really to make adjustments. I mean, as an example, let's say you want to try to work on getting your ball speeds up. And someone might give you some advice on getting your ball speed up to move back in the approach. Or maybe they tell you to hold the ball up further in your setup. This gives you the ability. Some of those things work for people and they don't for others. So you can try some things, make some adjustments, and really see whether you're getting the results that you want. So this can you can do that with speed. Um, another thing that you can do as far as making some of those adjustments is certainly playing different parts of the lane. All right, so here's um, some different angles of attack. Like I said, with speed, you can also see um, this is an example of someone trying fourth arrow, fifth arrow, and sixth arrow. So you can really try playing different parts of the lane and kind of see what your consistency looks like at the different, uh, the different zones. I know that I can't play out here. <laughs> um, I can play in here and in here some, but I'm not very good over here. Uh, so I certainly know Specto can uh, can help me. This is really you know an interesting one. We've been using Specto with a lot of bowlers, and this is um, uh, we're able to really kind of see what's working and kind of how different bowlers are affected. Um, so this is kind of using a bowler's practicing with Specto, and as we told you earlier, the bowler was just trying to be very focused on their target. They were thinking about what was going on out here, and this is the consistency that they saw. And then here, the coach moved the bowler's focus out here onto the approach, getting them to be focused more on the process, on their alignment, their footwork, and just trying to repeat and do the same thing physically over again as opposed to be focusing on the lane. And you see how much the results changed and improved. And here's what happened when the bowler started talking to her friends. You can see the focus was lost and, and the consistency really went all over the place. So, you know, Specto is able to really observe those things. All right. Um, now we're going to play a video um, showing of Daria how she uses Specto here at the training center. And we'll follow that with some questions and answers with Daria and myself.
favorite tools is having like a set, second set of eyes, but so much more precise, right? So if I'm working on targeting or I'm working on my spare shots, uh, when I'm trying to set up my lines, I want to make sure that what I'm seeing is exactly what it is. So Spectre just shows me right away whether I hit my target or not. And that's why it helped me so much to figure out my spare lines. I would try to stand somewhere, aim at certain spots, and then if I would make that spare, I would go into Specto, I would look what was exactly my line, write it down in the notebook, and we'll figure out every single pin at time. So I think it's, it's great for anybody, because we just tend to think that we see things better than what they are. So many times I feel like I didn't hit my target, it just happened that I split, and then I turn around, I have Specto, and Specto clearly shows that I did not hit my mark. So it's a great tool, uh, and I can really, really recommend it to everybody. Yes. Yep. Got All right. We want... Here we go. All right, we've got Daria with me now. Hi. If you guys like the video, uh, first we're gonna Daria is gonna announce a contest. Well, actually, I've got a cup one more slide here, Daria. We know that most of you that are on have a Specto um, near a bowling center that's a bowling center close to you. Um, here at you can go to SpectoBowling.com. There's lots of information uh, where you can find a Specto. You know, right after we first started having Specto on, on the PBA tour, a lot of proprietors were calling us and saying, hey, my bowlers are asking me for it. And we had a couple bowling centers that actually installed Specto. So if you don't have Specto at a bowling center near you, we recommend talking to your proprietor about it. A lot of them are thinking about it. They may not know that their bowlers want it or want to bowl with it. So if you don't have one at the bowling center next to you, start to have a conversation with them about it, and you never know where it might lead. There's some some good information there in terms of financing and good models. So, all right, we got a contest. Daria's yeah. going to announce this contest. Okay, Go ahead, so Daria. Okay, so the first 50 people who finish a world. So there's four words, which is four different difficulties. The first the first 50 who finish 10 levels of any world get a free t-shirt. So it's pretty cool. All right, get started. So just to repeat, there's four levels. Doesn't matter what's, what's a difficulty level. Just have to, to, to complete that full world in March. The first 50 get one of these t-shirts. So we've got I am a world traveler. Aspecto. I am consistently inconsistent. I, I love that. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I'm gonna get. I'm get that one. I am too good to be true. Aspecto. So we got some, you know, some fun T-shirts that we'll uh, we'll send out to the first 50. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. We appreciate. It. Looks like we still got the majority of the people. We appreciate you guys. Um, and gals sticking around with us. We've got 56 people here. We've been going for about an hour. We're gonna go to chat and ask some questions, answer some questions. Brent, you got these tagged for me? Yeah. Where are they tagged? The Q &A. Let me see. Come show me. I don't know where they are. <laughs> we all I would stay if Daria was coming, too. That certainly makes sense. Uh, where are they <laughs> tagged here, Brent? Mm -hmm. I don't see I don't them. Mm. Go to qu questions. Mm -hmm. There are red marked red. There's only one. Very small and you scroll down. Is that it? Hey, all right. I'll, listen, I'm just going to go through here some of the questions we've got. Here we go. You see them? Oh, Kingo. Hi, Kingo. All right. From Wait. Japan. It's very present. late in there. Go to presentation okay. screen. Uh, all right. Is it the same thing here and there? Looks like it. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, question here from Joe. Uh, sorry, Joe, if we pronounce, do you want to try to pronounce Joe's last name? Drugman? Ja. Joe. Joe ja. <laughs> Uh The question is, maybe it exists and haven't found it, but um, for a novice, it's not very clear to interpret the reports coming out of the challenges. So, it seems you really need a coach to explain this to you, some information um, on how to interpret the different level, levels. 
um, what can we do to improve would be useful. So maybe if your speed is inconsistent, maybe mention um, which exercise would be good. Yeah, it's a good suggestion. Joe, I know we are working on making the reports better. Uh, we've got a lot of coaches here at the training center, and we're having some – Okay, um, and we've got some coaches really working on some different tips. So inside these reports to do exactly what you're talking about, to be able to, to kind of have the different areas and point you in some of those of directions. So it's a good suggestion. Another suggestion we had is it would be cool to have the app record video of approach release um, and have the clips associated with shots. What do you think? Or is that coming? It would be the coaches app. It would be the adopt the world. probably come to the mobile app as well. All right, uh, we've got Or Avaram with us today. Uh, or is the lead programmer, developer of the software, and he says this feature is coming up in the Coaches app. Um, and if we have it in the Coaches app first, then there's a chance it might make its way to the mobile app. So good suggestion. Next question from Soren Hansen: Is there an app that you can use Specto on, or uh, do you have to go down to the Kegel Training Center? Good question, Soren. Basically, yes, Specto, you've got to use it in a bowling center that's got it installed near you. So you can go to SpectoBowling.com um, and look at all the bowling centers that have it installed. Uh, there are 114 of them in 24 countries, so there's a chance there might be one uh, near you, certainly one closer to you than the Kegel Training Center. But it is something that you need to have uh, the hardware installed in the bowling center in order for, uh, for the, the software to, to work. All right. Um, Brian Klein asks, um, does the mobile app only work in conjunction with a Specto equipped facility? Um, and the app is not integrated with the camera's phone to be able to use the shot analyzing tool. Yep, Brian, similar question. The, the software itself does need to have the hardware installed in the bowling center. So the basic model here for, for Specto is we're selling the Specto system to a bowling center, and the bowling center has the, the LiDAR sensor that's tracking the ball, that's providing all of the information into the application. So you've got to go to SpectoBowling.com and look at the center's list and see if there's one that has it installed near you. Um, if, if not, like we said, you can certainly have some conversations with your local proprietor. Let them know that you'd like to use the tool, you'd like to practice with it. Um, and we certainly have seen proprietors respond to that. The more they learn that this is something that their bowlers want, have a demand for, the more they'll respond. It's not something that's very expensive. There doesn't need to be a, that much utilization for it for the finances to make sense for a proprietor. So certainly we, we would encourage you to do that. All right. Um, are you going this way? I think we're going down. Okay. That was oh. really what he went here. That was, yes, that was the last one. All right. Let me see here. Um, any questions for Daria? I don't see here. All right, just keep chatting with some questions, guys. We'll certainly we'll hang out. And if you have any questions for me about the product or for Daria. Um, so I see, okay, I see a couple questions. Where's the co coaches app available from? Have the Specto app on my iPad already. Um, Larry, it's, it's a, sorry? It's on the website. It requires a Windows PC to run. Right. Um, it's available on the website. It requires a Windows PC to run. So um, it's also on the Windows Store. I got it right from the experts here <laughs> telling me. They told me the Windows Store, the website also. But you, you can actually download this on your own Windows-based laptop PC and bring that with you into the bowling center and use some of the more robust features. Um, next question is, is the webinar being recorded? Can we download it and show it to our teammates that haven't been able to watch it live? The answer is yes. Um, is there a fee charge for the coach's app? Um, 
as far as the software itself, the, the fees are a little bit tricky. Um, we sell the hardware and the system, the install to a bowling center. They install the hardware, which needs to be there in order for everything to work. Um, but all the software that comes with it is all free. So if a bowling center has installed it, um, you know, the software, the people that want to use it in that bowling center, the software is available for free. Um, but the bowling center might want to charge to, to bowl, you know, and to charge to use it with the software. So there's, from Kegel, there's not a, a fee for that. All right, we've got some questions for you, Daria. Uh, two questions here. Will you be in Europe for a tournament anytime soon? No, I will be in Madrid, though, over the summer. There is a European bowling tour final. I think it's called Masters, and I will be mm -hmm. bowling that. I will right. not be in Germany this year. So. No. <laughs> You're bowling yeah. a whole bunch more here. You got some things. Yeah, going. I do have yeah. a tour starting in April, so it's gonna be very hectic summer with lots of travels. But I, I try to squeeze in Europe, and most likely I will be in Madrid. Right. I've seen you in Korea and Japan. Yeah. You're going all over. Everywhere. Here's a question, Daria. Um, what is your single most important practice routine? Well, it's very hard to pick one routine. I think that since forever I've been doing drills, but now that I'm getting ready for tour, I'm putting my physical game on the side, and that's when spectral comes in play. This is when I focus on my targeting, my lines, my speed, my launch angles. So when I come to practice the past couple of weeks, I really, really put back on the deep practice and look at uh, what's my lunch speed and what's my targeting to see where my flows, where I really need to put work on. And mm -hmm. it's not a secret that anywhere between second and third arrow, that's my weakest spot. That's my weakness. Yeah. yeah, I can play straight by the gather. I can hook the line. But exactly those small angles is what I struggle with. Interesting. And uh, yeah, I tend to have my speed too fast or too slow. It varies. So Spectre really helps me to show to show what is it, and that's how I practice. I just Great. turn it on and and look if I'm targeting well. We would make a good combo team because I can only play between the second and third arrow. That's <laughs> it. I can't hit anywhere else. Okay. <laughs> so that would really really work. Yeah, for me. we'd be good. A yeah. good team. Um. We've got a question um, from Marcelino Riviera asking, how do you prepare to bowl in tournaments mentally? It's the same thing. I feel like a lot of players have been asking me, like, hey, I really struggle mentally. What should I do? And I'm still standing for what I've always been saying. I think mental games is your physical game. Mm -hmm. So if you're aware of what you're doing, if you have enough knowledge to understand what's happening on the line, your confidence is already higher because you know why you split or mm. why it doesn't work. You're not always blaming everything on physical game. Yeah. I feel like, I'm oh, sorry, on mental game. I feel like a lot of players practice and their practices go well. It's because they always go in the same bowling center most of the time. So of course they know when they have to hit to strike and when it's going to be a split, but then they go to a different environment mm -hmm. and those lines are not in play anymore, so they feel lost and that's when they start to play in the mental game and it's not mental. Mm. If you're bowling in the wrong spot or you cannot repeat the shot, yeah. it's not really just your fault, so it's not mental. So like when you, have you been in what you would describe a rut? And like, is that mentally challenging for you to kind of keep yourself up, you know, when you're bowling really uh -huh. good and you're seeing good results on the lane versus when maybe you're going through a few tournament stretch where you're not yeah, not making the finals and not making shows? Yeah, that's probably the worst part of like being a professional bowler. We bowl so much and hitting that um, like hitting those few bad tournaments and really you really start doubling your capabilities. Yeah. It's just always seeing that big picture. I have my goals for the next five, ten years. Yeah. And I know I'm gonna be hitting those slumps. I'm gonna have those tournaments when I'm not gonna come even close to the cut. Right. I know it's gonna be happening a few weeks in a row, but it's about learning from them and knowing mm. how to handle it. You know, right. last year I felt like I didn't handle it very well. Uh, the beginning of a tour was very rough for me. I was very tired from traveling. I wasn't bowling well. And I just started digging deeper and deeper into my miserability. I felt like I was the only one in the world that was feeling that way, you know? Really? And it's not how it works. It's just a, you have to come to the realization that that's going to happen and yeah. it's normal and you yeah. have to just fight back. Well, we're pulling for you. You're going to yeah. have good results this year. You're going to be tired. Right. You're doing a lot of traveling this year, yeah. too. Um, John asked a question about talking about RPM calculation. Um, John, I think it's best um, 
I don't know if everybody knows, Specto as the sensor is measuring speed, it's measuring where the ball is and angles, but one of the things that is an actual calculation is the RPM number. Um, John, we'll reach out, rather than me to try to explain it to you, because I don't know the exact math and the answer in terms of the calculation. You want to, you want to, uh, okay, in. come on, Thanks or, my, my <laughs> here's the right smart there. guy, Hello. Hi guys. or we'll answer. Right, so there are a couple of questions over there uh, relating to how we bring up the numbers. One of them was the speed, so we'll start with the easier one. Mm -hmm. uh, speed, as you see it on, on the Fox TV shows and what you see uh, on Specto, there is launch speed. And launch speed is being uh, calculated as the average speed on the first 20 feet that the ball travels on the lane. So just before any hook starts to happen, any friction starts to affect the speed, this is what we show as the launch speed. But the second question relates mm -hmm. to RPM. RPM is a calculation. Um, there are uh, different factors that can affect this calculation. Basically, what behind the scene, is, what is going on is Spectre tries to come up with a number that will uh, that that's supposed to generate the type of shape we see from the ball, what kind of uh, speed loss we we see from front to back, and the direction change from uh, from moving out to then returning back in towards the pocket. Uh, and those factors, uh, there are some factors that might affect this, like the volume of oil on the lane, the, 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 the length of the pattern, the bowler's rotation and tilt. Uh, what we generally see is if you're shooting it straight up the boards with really high speed, RPM do tend to shoot up into unrealistic numbers. But when you, make a, uh, when you perform a decent shot where the ball actually hooks and gets into roll, the numbers are fairly accurate, and we're, what's in, more important is uh, it's consistent throughout the shots. So it can tell you if your RPM was consistent over 10, 10 shot uh, game, or if you if you grabbed it, or if you kind of let it go, and the RPM went down. It will show also on the difference of the number that comes up from Spectrum. Thank you. Thank you, Or. I'm very complicated. Um, there's, one, there's one more for you, uh, right. uh, Gabrielle Vede. I'm sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly. Asked, um, why does sometimes the specto does not read the the motion? It was not just about RPM, but also angle correctly. Is it because of ball surface, for example, like a color of ball? That was a good good question. Yeah, that was a good question. Uh, well, as uh, as it was explained, uh, specto is a lidar based. There is uh, laser beam going uh, around the center and trying to think, uh, find objects in space. There are some colored balls. Basically, um, what we know is uh, like spare balls, which are uh, the, uh, some of the transparent spare balls or very dull, dark urethane bowling balls that uh, uh, the sensor has some difficulty seeing. So uh, on those specific uh, those specific shots, we might not be able to get a good reading from Spectre. Okay. Thank you, or that you, that why don't you why don't you hang out unless there's I'm, a more technical right question? Right but it looks like um, she makes me look better. Or it's like sitting next to her. Um, we know each other very long. Uh, long time. Joe asked another another question here. I think we uh, looked. Joe, this is Joe uh, Drugman said uh, another question was how is the speed of hand speed off the hand, off the hand. measured? Yeah, that's what I explained earlier. Uh, we measure the average time for the ball to travel for the first 20 feet on the lane. Okay. I think I'm, I'm looking at all the um, the questions that have been flagged. I think is there one more? Yeah, a little better. On the, uh, oh, here we go. Just came in from Daryl Jacobs. Says, uh, does Coach's tool allow for the oil pattern to be shown with the shot data overlaid? Yes, we can overlay the oil pattern on on the on the lane. It is on the Coach's tool. You can just click the show oil pattern. It will let you choose. A file. A file can be a PDF file of the the pattern, or it can be just an image file that you want to to overlay on the lane, and uh, it will just display that. You can adjust also the distance, the the pattern length, and it will also adjust that overlay on the lane. Or what um, will the will the software have the bowling center's pattern in there, 
or is there a library of patterns already in there? Maybe some of the, the navigation patterns that they can pick from, or or does mm -hmm. the file need to be gathered? You know, so if it's a very specific pattern to that bowling center where they're bowling, right? You know, would the, would the pattern be in there automatically, or does someone have to get it and put it in there? Well, we usually create a, a specific file for for Specto, um, but we can also load an existing PDF. So if you actually go and, down and install the Specto pattern library, which is a separate app that has a big library of patterns, you can mm -hmm. download the patterns from there and then load it into Specto. Okay, great. How can you find the bowling center that has Specto? Is there like anywhere on the website? Somebody yeah. Somebody was asking well, in the chat. Yeah. It's in we, the application. We, yeah, I mean, in the application, but also we've got at Kegel.net, there's information about Specto, but Specto is the only product we have that has its own website. It's SpectoBowling.com, and there's also a resource there where you can look and see where the bowling centers are located. So, two ways. Cool. Um, all right. So, at the, the location service starts, maybe you should say. So, uh, oh, hello, we'll honey. Work. Another question here is Specto coaching software is only for Windows. Will the Specto coaching software come out in iOS as well? There are currently no plans to port the coaches app to iOS or Android. No. Okay. Um, here's a couple of questions are still coming in. Good. Can multiple bowlers on the same lane be separated in shot display such as with a team? Right. Good question. Um, Currently, with the latest version, uh, we have the first phase of scoring integration on the bowling center with Specto and Lane Talk. You will be able to see for each shot who made the shot, uh, the bowler's name. So you can quickly uh, just uh, pick the bowlers uh, that you don't want to look at and delete their shots, and then just keep the, the shots that you have made by yourself. Uh, it does require Lane Talk to, to run, and you have to start a game so we know whose bowler's turn it is on the lane. Uh, on the next few um, few versions, you will see more and more uh, integration in towards uh, scoring. So you can actually lock your app to a specific bowler, and it will capture shots from your from your shot from your game uh, only. I'll also track you across a few games, or if you also transition between lanes, like in a tournament condition, Spectre will be able to track you across the house. All right, thank you. Or just a couple of quick uh, questions here. Uh, um, Kengo asked, is, uh, is there an extra cost to use Specto at the local centers? Um, the answer is it depends. Um, it's, it's the bowling center's choice. We sold them Specto. Um, it's really up to the bowling center how they choose. They've made an investment. Um, if they have made the investment, they're really one of the centers that are kind of on the, the cutting edge that's investing in coaching, investing in the future of bowling. Uh, they've made some different decisions about how they choose to get that investment back. Um, so um, the answer is it really, it really depends on, and it's the bowling center's choice. Uh, we've seen it um, handled a variety of ways. Um, another question here from, can I get a John Davis or so? These are the very difficult names, like every name. Uh, Anik uh, Kour, Kournilisen, sorry, um, asked about uh, what about uh, like topography. Um, the coaching software does have the ability to do this, um, but to get topography information about the bowling centers where the bottleneck is, um, Kegel's got the lane mapper, which is the only tool that has the ability to capture these lane graphs. And um, we've got it on some bowling centers that we've been to for some tournaments. Um, but to a large degree, there are very few bowling centers worldwide in terms of percentage that we actually have lane maps for. So the features there, but the information about the topography is something that likely in most cases is not there. So. All right, a uh, couple questions here. Thomas Stott said uh, our bowling center has uh, Specto, but no lane talk. Will team play without lane talk ever work? Um, <laughs> or? Well, lane talk is the first uh, integration we did. Uh, because lane talk already did the hard work of integrating with the different vendors, uh, it just made more sense to start with them. Uh, if, if uh, there is a requirement if there is a need to integrate with additional uh, vendors or directly with the scoring systems. This is something we will investigate. Okay. 
Um, Scott asked if we don't have a Specto Center close, how do we schedule a time to come to Kegel? Call Brent. Or uh, you, certainly we have our calendar on kegeltrainingcenter.com, but Brent Sims, um, he's right behind us here, uh, running production. Um, he'll grab your information here and get in touch with you, Scott, in terms of uh, how you can look at getting coming down to Kegel. We'd love to have you visit. It's a cool, cool place. Mm -hmm. They're testing our fire alarms today. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, any other questions? I think that's our sign. Rather, I think that's our cue to wrap things up. We actually told them to to hold off until about 12:15 or so, thinking we'd wrap up in about an hour. So we thank everybody for coming out today. Thank you, to Daria, for coming in, Marianne, answering some technical questions. We appreciate everybody joining us, and. Um, all right, take care.